So let's have a look at the teams. Alongside me, Camilla Buchanan, Saracen Mavericks assistant coach here in the UK Super League and former England international. Camilla, this is what coach Dan Ryan's going with. Yeah, and he's gone with a strong start in seven. You can see coaches are starting to get their seven now. We've got Nolene Armstrong's been given the nod at goal shooter after really showing how strong she was against uh, her game yesterday. In for Zimbabwe, Takeda and Lovu have been fantastic in goal shooter and goal attack. Malaudi gets the nod at centre, Kwaramba at wing defence. Saichitama is captain at wing attack, Wangwa at goal defence and 5 foot 2 Karume in at goalkeeper. So the Zimbabwe crowd, well they never need an excuse to party, their fans are amazing and when they're playing in the World Cup they've worked so hard to get here with coach Lloyd Makundi, they're enjoying every single moment but Northern Ireland have their fans in the house, do not doubt that here this evening. Ready to rock and roll, both sets of fans in this final Group A match. As I mentioned, Northern Ireland and Zimbabwe are through. They'll go through to the second stage of prelim qualifying, which starts tomorrow. In terms of the umpires, Kate Stevenson from England, Helen George from Australia, the reserve Jeanette Elderling of South Africa taking charge. And the ball being brought on. Nice touch. The winner of this match faces New Zealand tomorrow. The loser faces Malawi. And the first centre pass then of this match between Northern Ireland and Zimbabwe. So Camilla Buchanan. Both of these teams will go forward to Group F, but of course the points matter, the goals matter. They do, and as you said, they both go forward and they, they'll play the others in their group. However, it's the points that they take forward that will give them a preferable position in terms of semi-final position so all to play for this afternoon and Zimbabwe off to a good start to Kaiser one from one using the crowd early doors the eighth player here in the arena for Zimbabwe but right of reply immediately down the other end Northern Ireland are saying okay we know you're here Zimbabwe fans we've got our fans as two First minute, we've already gone one goal apiece. The ball flies in the direction of Camilla Buchanan, who kindly throws it over her shoulder and gives it back. Good work, Camilla. Haven't lost it. Never. So Zimbabwe on the sidelines. The Zimbabwe Gems. The singing has started. Laudi with the ball through to the top. So Kaiser goes back. Michelle Drain, fantastic with the loose pick up there. Just forced offside by Quaramba and the transition through to circle edge nice flat ball into Armstrong who nails it and the fans roar great work there over the back Michelle Drain just using her experience there so Hanlon with the centre pass a reminder game one on Friday for Northern Ireland an 88-24 loss to Australia Oh. A heavy fall from Carolina O'Hanlon in that match, but she recovered well to take on their second match, which they won against Sri Lanka. And they're starting well here, Camilla, setting out their stall early doors. Yeah, and we just saw Nolene Armstrong there with the shuffle shot of all shuffle shots. She passed it in and out about three times and a great reach. Oh, nice work there from Gemma Lawler, just rolls into the back space to win that ball. Patience for Northern Ireland's drain to O'Hanlon. Something that Northern Ireland have really been working on and proved very successful for them yesterday was their transition through court. When they win the ball, either a dead ball or an interception, the way that they power through that court, Caroline O'Hanlon so hard to stop. I think we'll see some more of that today. They won every quarter yesterday in that win against Sri Lanka. O'Hanlon, nice captain, said afterwards it was a bit of a patchy performance. So they're looking to tidy that up today. And they've started well here. This is exactly what coach Dan Ryan would have wanted, exactly what Caroline O'Hanlon would have wanted. And Maggie starting in that goal attack position. She was back on form yesterday with a 91% shot rate, Cam. 
So she's back on form and it's a full goal lead. Sticky hands there from Takaiza. Great work. Novu just bringing the ball forward. Sucking the defenders forward so that ball can go nicely into that back space. Defence being shouted by the Zimbabwe fans. Just a little overcooked on that pass there. Nolene Armstrong brought the defender enough forward for there to be enough space in the back, but not quite pinpoint enough. So centre court action. Zimbabwe looking to push through that centre third and through the defence of Northern Ireland. Contact called against the wing defence. Carolina Hanlon at the centre for Northern Ireland. Got 100 capped yesterday, so it was lovely to have it. And obviously get the win. <laughs> Unfazed, so oh, calm is Kaiser. Cross court, 5-3, coming up to 10 and a half minutes remaining of the first quarter. Defence, oh, Hanlon doing a little bit of a fake path, but having to go across the shooting D. Over into the hands of Drain and contact called. Northern Ireland centre pass. Oh, that's lovely contact, space contact. created off the centre pass, but contact called. The offensive contact Bandage, from Armstrong. We've heard a lot of that from the umpires this tournament. Something that's really cheap ball giveaway. Really good defensive pressure from Northern Ireland, something they will be working on from yesterday's match. They're really trying to stop. Oh, unlucky there from Lawler. They're just trying to create that long ball. Fantastic from Taikiza. Really trying to create that long ball for the interception. They almost did. Time they get the ball back to centre, please. Lawler just couldn't quite pull that in, but the vision was there. 50, 59 from 62, and 95% scoring rate. And she had in the game against Sri Lanka, the goal shooter. And she's got her shooting shoes on today. Five from five in the early part. Under 10 minutes remaining, Zimbabwe pulling this one back, Cam. They were stretching out a little bit of a lead, Northern Ireland, but they're getting some momentum. They're using the eighth player in the crowd and putting some good stuff together. They are, and they've started off absolutely the most clinical team in attack. They've kept it short, they've kept it sharp and slick. However, a miss by Takeda. First miss of the game. And Northern Ireland with a chance to take this ball through the court with a quick transition. Just look at that, so hard to stop. Zimbabwe will have to learn very quickly how to slow that down if they're going to want to turn over some ball. Uh, obstruction called outside the circle. Michelle Drain waits for the ball to come back. So on the shooting circle, a little bit of fake pass with a nice take in. Bounce pass back from the goal shooter, Nolene Armstrong. Four from four at the moment. Contact, Some nice little keeper. snippets of information. Clarification of the rules here at the Netball World Cup. Take a step so Northern in, Ireland step will in. go back in possession with Armstrong. Under the 10-foot post. Goal defence, obstruction. Nice work from Nolene Armstrong, who's come into this Northern Ireland uh, side after Bounders retiring. Goal. But the injury to Lisa Bowman saw her pulled in late. Wasn't able to join the team straight away, but has, is here and Contact has made a real difference. On the ball. Contact. Getting the start from Dan Ryan today. And she has. 22 from 26 yesterday for Armstrong. Came as a half-time sub and sunk 22 goals for the Northern Ireland side. But Zimbabwe, as per usual in this World Cup so far, not going Contact. anywhere. They really did rattle the Aussie Diamonds yesterday. Yes, it was a heavy loss for Zimbabwe, yeah, but they surely felt the presence 
of the new World Cup side to the defending champions. And Northern Ireland know they've got a game on here and are stretching it out slightly again to a two-goal lead. Oh, nice work from Neve Cooper, and she got the nod also in there, that wing defence position. Such a tenacious defender, just waiting for her time to run through on that interception. That was fantastic timing. Great work from her there to win the ball back for Emma McGee to slot that away. And if you just have a look at that one-handed take, effortless, and slot away by McGee. Nolene Armstrong with some good movement, holds in one space towards the top. Feeder doesn't give it, changes to the post. Conversations, shouting, direction from all of the Zimbabwe gems here in this final Group A match with Norland Island. It's a shot percentage, Northern Ireland on fire at the moment with a four goal advantage. Six minutes remaining of this first quarter. It's as fast and as furious as we expected here on court number two. Nice take again, those sticky hands that Camilla Buchanan talks about are being very effective at the moment for Zimbabwe. They are, and you can see that early on, Northern Ireland have opted for a two-on-one defence on Tokaida. However, if we see Lovu get into this game, she's also very effective, so it'll give them something to think about. So, contact call there. On Kwangwa, the listless Kwangwa. Not going her way. So you see the height difference between the Northern Ireland shooter and the goalkeeper in position at the moment of Kurume for Zimbabwe. Uh, Carolina Hanlon pulled up for holding. She'll stand by, hands behind her back. Zimbabwe then on the charge, looking to pull another one back to bring the deficit back to three. Lovu yeah. just opting out of taking that shot there. When we saw her in her first game, she was full of confidence, full of flair. That's strapping on that right knee, potentially making her think twice about it. Construction keeper, goalkeeper's out of play. Goalkeeper stands by. Northern Ireland oblige their noisy fans and a nice little pocket of them. Camilla just to our right in the commentary position, making themselves heard here against the Zimbabwe fans. And four and a half minutes remaining now until the end of the first quarter. What you've seen so far, Camilla? Impressed, and if so, by who? Yep, so like I said, Northern Ireland have definitely started off the more clinical team. Their transition through court is really slick. Defensively, you can see they've got a, a game plan. I'd really like to see Lovu Zimbabwe's goal attack get into this game. She's not had a shot yet. And as I said, when she gets herself into the game, she'll really give Tona something to think about. But at the moment, there's a real hustle going on there. Because she's not in the game, they're just opting to double on to Keza. Center obstruction. Caroline O'Hanlon gets pulled. It's given a penalty. Well, defense, inside the so impressive she's been so top. far this tournament. At the top. True leader. Well, she has. Dave yeah, Dan Ryan, defense. the Northern Ireland team, and their fans are real scared when she had that heavy Stand fall in the first game against Australia. But the doctor, and the professional Gaelic footballer, bounced back wonderfully well. She's got 100 caps, as I mentioned yesterday, and she's leading her side at the moment, Carolina Hanlon, to a four-goal advantage. Coming up to three minutes remaining. Zimbabwe now, they've put some really good work in this first quarter. Wanting to stay close, wanting to capitalise. The goal attack now is dis... <laughs> She'll get to retake that one. Yeah, that's, so that's not just, allowed. <laughs> yeah, not, not quite. <laughs> Tona just... Working it out of her hands. A little bit amateur, that. Even then, though, she didn't take the shot. The goal attack still. We wait for her to get off the mark here in this game for Zimbabwe. But on the other end, well, Ireland, Armstrong at 100%, Maggie at 100%, doing the job that's needed and just rolls in. Yeah, and that you can see they've really done their homework on their centre passes. Michelle Drain with a fantastic second phase there, but look at this defence from Northern Ireland. 
they're constantly switching, they're doing that double that we talked about on that occasion, they're able to get it through. A lot of pressure to put on her. Great take there from Takaisa. Great still. Kwanga just winning the ball for her team and then powering through the middle to support an attack. Shooting stats there that I just mentioned, both the Northern Ireland shooters at 100%. So, under two minutes remaining until the first team tour for Lloyd Makunde and Dan Ryan. The attack picks up on the back line. See if Ima throws it in. And now they're going to capitalise. O'Hanlon with the vision. There's a cross court, and before you know it, O'Hanlon's passed on and she's at the side. Oh, yeah, that's so unlucky. Indeed, but unlucky. That was a early on. It was a great choice by Emma McGee to overlook Michelle Drain on the forward ball. Opted for Caroline O'Hanlon taking ball through the middle, but then just sloppy footwork. Offside when attack, they pass. See, it's the basics like this. We have sloppy footwork. We have an offside. These are the things you just can't give away. We know that it's going to be a close game. Unforgivable errors. From a coach's perspective, something they have to tighten up, but she redeems herself with a shot. And it's back to four for Northern Ireland. 45 seconds to go. The young team of Zimbabwe, average aid of 24. They've got the energy, they've got the drive and desire in their first ever World Cup. And looking to hang on to the coattails of Northern Ireland. It's been a good first oh. quarter in this match. A wonderful take. Another statistic is going to go on the board for Joyce Takidza. She's now shooting at about 92%. But in the final 15 seconds, can Northern Ireland pop another one on the board? Can they stretch it out to four? A bit of a collision. Carolina Hands used to that, though. Last 10 seconds. Boom. Stays on her feet this time, good to see. But Zimbabwe take possession, but it's too late. And at the end of the first quarter, Northern Ireland are leading Zimbabwe by 15 goals to 12. The world number eights are coming out on top of the moment. But this is a fight here between Northern Ireland and Zimbabwe. Indeed, Northern Ireland on 15, Zimbabwe on 12. Northern Ireland having that 10 from Armstrong, 5 from Maggie so far. Takeda producing all the bombs at the moment for Zimbabwe. So it was a strong post first quarter chat from Zimbabwe and Lloyd Makundi. I was watching him, very animated, getting his message across to his team, the Zimbabwe Gems. Looking to get the first goal on the board of this second quarter. Nice step forward. And the goal shooter, as per usual so far, there he is, providing a goal. And that's what he was doing throughout, Camilla, that first 50 minutes. What would he have been saying? What's frustrating you? Well, it's their finish, first of all. They need a supporting role in that goal attack position, but they're just not able to punch through the Northern Ireland zone off-marking defence that they're putting on which Dan Ryan will be very happy about, but he'll be expecting them to punch through the middle of the court if, they're not if they don't receive it, pull out and go again. Just a bit more intensity from the Zimbabwe attack. Armstrong pops another one in. 10 from 10. It was a clap over the head from head coach Dan Ryan when she nailed that one. You see him there just on the right of his shot in the green of Northern Ireland. It's a take and a good position set up once again by Zimbabwe. They're niggling at them, Camilla. They're not letting Northern Ireland get away here. It's capitalising, isn't it? Because in the blink of an eye, Armstrong's in the position again. But misses. Yeah, and a back line, so she gets another bite at it. Yeah. Just would like to see a bit more structure from the Zimbabwe defence because they can win ball. They're just not getting into those required positions early enough. 
That's better from Zimbabwe, unable to pick that up. McGee Contact gets the lead in. Penalty called, Armstrong takes over the shooting duties and obliges with another goal for Northern Ireland, 17-14. Little stretch away of three, which was the difference after the first 15 minutes. So, cross court, long ball cross court. It paid off as well for Zimbabwe. That is what the fans want to see, good movement. Absolutely, I'd like to see them being able to change their mind there. That was a great ball into pocket, Lola. Went for the interception, but was unsuccessful. Great strength Contact from Caroline O'Hanlon there. Center Just third. laughing that off. It's nothing to her. <laughs> hey, three World Cups. Plays with Manchester Thunder, Thunder, the UK Super League side, the Super League champions this year in our 10-team UK Contact League. Center. There she is, O'Hanlon. Multitasker. Getting the job done and trying to direct her side before they head towards Group F in the second stage of the prelims. Kurumbe just called for that contact. Oh, into that loose ball. Well, there's some boos ringing round and a few Zimbabwe fans on their feet. There's their goal kick, the keeper hits the floor, but Kurumbe's back up. Mid-court action. Great feed there from Lovu into the double again. Great pressure from Takaiza. She's been standing that mum of three. She talked about in her interview how, what she would say to her children and just she said, look at your mum and you can do anything you'd like to do in life. What an inspiration she is. There's that transition we talk about, Caroline O'Hanlon just punching through the court there. Signalling to the top of the circle, waiting for something to open up. Hold time please, centre, centre. That's persistent contact, don't obstruction, it's a caution. Hold on, I've held time, get the ball so back. Caution being handed out to the centre. Patricia Miladi of Zimbabwe. So a caution is given when the umpire deems that you are persistently doing something or intentionally, a caution must be given. And she was obstructing on the top of the circle within the three feet distance. Armstrong puts another one on the tally with whoops and cheers coming from the Northern Ireland bench. Dan Ryan, head coach, has got his head in his notes at the moment, pen in his left hand, poised with the cogs turning. And this is good work from the Northern Ireland defence. Well, just able to punch through that. Tona unable to get to that. But Northern Ireland are doing a good job of stopping the second phase, getting deep. But they were unable to stop the middle ball there and they're able to get it through to Takaiza. Caroline O'Hanlon receiving the ball on the top of the D there. An absolute masterclass for centre court players to get into that ideal position to feed. Armstrong popping top there. Slots it away with ease. Dan Ryan happy with that. Well, he should be happy because his team are responding here. Zimbabwe continuing to nip at the heels. They came to one behind Northern Ireland just a few moments ago. And the Northern Irish side have pulled it back out to three. Under 10 minutes remaining now in this first quarter. Northern Ireland looking to add to the win they had yesterday against Sri Lanka. O'Hanlon said yesterday, well, they played a different style, Sri Lanka. It's not one that we were used to, but we were happy to get away with the win, even though our performance was a bit patchy. They don't want a bit patchy today. They want a good performance going into Group F. And they're on the charge now. Looking to go cross-court. O'Hanlon is going to do very well. No, too much to ask for her to keep that one in. <laughs> and as you say, both coaches wanting more from their team. Dan Wine expects the best and Gail Davies are interviewed Lloyd McCunde yesterday and he said that three goals was too many to miss from Takiza so he's expecting perfection from his shooters which is what we expect on the world scene. Well, Takiza's only missed one so far she's 18 from 19 but where he might be looking at half time is his goal attack position who still has not 
to shoot a goal. It's a one-shot shooting machine for Zimbabwe at the moment. And Lovu in the goal attack position hasn't contributed yet, and it's all on the shoulders of that goal shooter there, and the reason why they're still even in this match against Northern Ireland. Absolutely, and that would be something that I would absolutely question in terms of our goal attack to the coaches. Do you want your goal attack to play a supporting feeding role, or do you want your goal attack to get in amongst it and support? Because for 60 minutes, and that pressure to be on to Kaiza, that's a lot to ask for her. We pulled it back to one. So a battle on the court, Northern Ireland, Zimbabwe. A battle in the stands here at the MS Bank Arena. You've got the Northern Irish fans there in your shot. Hey! But if you go down, you've got Zimbabwe. If you go back up, you've got Zimbabwe on their feet. Contact a chant off. A netball match on the court that is as close as anything. Only two goals in it with seven minutes remaining until potentially Dan Ryan or Lloyd Mukunde make any changes. Would you make any if you were Dan Ryan, Camilla? At the moment, I think that they've got a really nice connection. Emma McGee and Nolene Armstrong. Michelle Drain is absolutely controlling that midcourt with Caroline O'Hanlon. They've got also got a good link. We talk about the links between players, between defence through to midcourt, and I think at the moment that the chain is working. And yes, they may not be ahead by many, but sometimes you just got to persevere and do it goal by goal to see out the win. I'm not too sure if there's anybody on the bench that I would introduce to this that would make such a difference. Well, he's ticking over nicely. You saw the quarter stats there just flashing up. Northern Ireland 15-12 in the first quarter. Seven apiece so far in the second quarter. With that heavy contribution from their goal shooter at Zimbabwe. O'Hanlon puts it over the top. What a wonderful vision and a spot. They're the goals that Northern Ireland are working for. And they're being rewarded with good moves like that. Injury. Oh, the goal attack that we've been saying hasn't contributed or even took a shot is now leaving the court for Zimbabwe. We hope that she recovers soon. Yeah, something that we absolutely were talking about there and it wasn't just the, the shooting role that was in there, it was also the work on the centre pass that there wasn't, there was no movement. And with this line of defence that Northern Ireland were creating, you've got to be able to pull them apart, and that requires a unit of work. And unfortunately, she just wasn't able to contribute. So Ursula Unlubu has gone off in the goal attack position. And Bonali, Sharon Bonali has come on. So the goal attack. There she is, on possession now in the ball, looking to make a difference, looking to help out her teammates in the goal shooting position. It falls to the goal shooter. A nice little one-handed tap-in. That's a to typical Kaiser. shot from African Nations, that one-handed shot there. So successful for her. On an obstruction goal attack. On its contact. Sitting on 96%. Real pressure building. On an obstruction goal attack. Well, this is it now for me, Camilla. They've made the change. Zimbabwe have two fit shooters on the court and have kept in this match with just one heavy shooting presence. Now what are we going to see with four and a half minutes coming up till half time? What difference is that change now the injured player has been removed? Well, it's going to give them something to think about. Fanula Tola and Gemma Laura have been doubling on. They're going to have to think about whether or whether where they pick up this goal attack to make sure that they that she's also not a threat. We see another change happening here for Zimbabwe. Yeah, Makunde making changes in the wing defence position. So Karamba is off. The change has been made. We'll bring confirmation of who has replaced in that wing defence position. There she is scrambling for the ball. to myself and Camilla, but everybody's OK. Oh, the ball's by me. Great One second contest first. there. Come on, Kath Mary, get the ball away. On my whistle. It's back, it's back. 
You can just sense the, the battles heating up here. Well, it is, the intensity's been risen. Camilla, a couple of changes by Zimbabwe. The intensity has gone up a notch with those changes by Lloyd Makunde from Zimbabwe. They are now one behind again. This to stretch it back out for two for Northern Ireland. That's a crucial miss, because now Zimbabwe have the opportunity for the first time in this match to take it back down court and draw it level. The fans eagerly wait in anticipation. The build-up to take it to 24 apiece. Contact called, wait for it. We are level. Fantastic, you can just see the lift in the Zimbabwean fans. Oh, that was absolutely crucial to Kaiser not putting a foot wrong the other end. Sitting on 23 from 24 shots. Absolutely holding this team together at the moment. Oh, Emma McGee underneath the post, off court. That's also a crucial call. Right, here we go again. Zimbabwe fans are beside themselves here in the arena. Down court through the centre third. Out wide, right in front of the Northern Ireland bench. This will be to take Zimbabwe in the lead. They've not been in the lead in this match so far. A step forward. And the shooting sensation of Joyce Takeza puts Zimbabwe in the lead. Two minutes before half time. 25-24. We've got a game on our hands. We've got an arena on our hands. The excitement is absolutely electric. Every single pass counts. Great strength from Takaiza. Tona hits the deck. She's absolutely unfazed by a single-handed shot as if she's in her playground. It's now two. Even though the goal attack position has been changed, to the credit of Joyce Takeda, she's still shooting everything for the Zimbabwe side. 26 from 27, every goal's come from her. Solid from Emma McGee, sitting on 90% shooting stats. Northern Ireland just need to not panic. They've got the structure. They're sitting in those positions. They just need somebody to go for the interception. As Lola did just there, just bide your time. Have faith in the structure and they will be able to win ball. So contact goalkeeper called. Armstrong to draw it level again. We're at 26 apiece. And we've got 55 seconds remaining. Karume Ooh. just settling her side, telling them to relax, not to, not to crumble. Nolene Armstrong doing well to keep that ball in there. McGee using the shuffle shot nicely to get closer. Very composed. Back in the favour of Northern Ireland with half a minute left. Zimbabwe centre pass. Do not hang around Zimbabwe if you want to go in at half time level. They've worked so hard. Northern Ireland, though, tenacious, determined not to let up a lead that they've had throughout the whole of this second quarter. Ten seconds on the clock to draw it level. 27 apiece. The crowd are going to count this one back. Northern Ireland, Zimbabwe, the final group match in Group A for them, finishes 27 goals apiece at half-time. Brilliant. Netball World Cup action. The fans here from any side that they're supporting are on their feet, delighted at what they're seeing. We knew it was going to be feisty. We knew it was going to be close, Camilla. What a match. Northern Ireland continually just staying ahead of the Zimbabwe side, but they're going after the first half an hour. Northern Ireland 27, Zimbabwe 27. So it makes you think, Camilla Buchanan, OK, there was clearly an injury to the goal attack that head coach Lloyd Makundi had on before. But if she was that bad, why are you putting her on? And where would they be in the position that they'd be in if it started with the, maybe the setup he has now? Absolutely, and you don't know what advice she was given and potentially she was 
deemed fit to start and just wasn't able to to put in the intensity but that call possibly could have been made quicker however it's not proved uh, it's not proved crucial to them yet so let's see what that happens with this gold attack we will see not a heavy debt not potentially that detrimental at the moment let's bring you up to speed with some changes that we're noticing already from the sides and we have a goal attack with a shot one from one from Granali fantastic that she's getting into this game oh Michelle Drain absolutely flawed she's a tough cookie brushes it off nothing to see here contact that's intentional Tell time that's an intentional contact it's a caution Caused the delay, so it's over here. Just at the bottom of the go. screen, you're seeing the changes for Anyone Northern Ireland. Take. Michelle McGee coming in at goal defence for Nula Tola, switching across to wing defence. Potentially the thought process behind that. Tola wins a lot of ball, as we see with that intercept there, but much more comfortable winning ball at wing defence. So potentially the thinking there. They're revving back up nicely at the start of this third quarter. 29 apiece, two goals by both sides in the early parts. Oh, and Lucky, and Lucky nearly kept it in play, Michelle Drain. Yeah, that go. ball was overcooked, but she was able to get a hand to Oh, they get another chance. So Northern Ireland back line the hands of O'Hanlon. Instruction called. So the centre for Zimbabwe, Maladi will stand by. Goes into a shooting position for Northern Ireland. Nicely tipped away by the defence of Zimbabwe. But Northern Ireland go again. It's a good defensive effort back into the hands of a Northern Ireland player, converted to a goal eventually. Patricia puts her hands up in that centre position. Patricia Malaudi looking to encourage her team. One of the Zimbabwe players is winded here. I think it is the centre. She's in a bit of trouble. She's got Patricia on the back of her shirt. And Malaudi in that centre position, getting herself back into place. She's shouting to her player, you know, carry on playing. See, that's experience there. She knows if she calls time that she has to come off the court. She's got a decision to make and contact centre. quickly Rush, is contact able to run that off. But if she does call it, she has to come contact off. Keeper. But if she's not 100% fit, she's her team's potentially playing with six players. She's not 100% here. She is. Look, she's taken the ball, the centre. Patricia Malaudi. Get herself back into this game. Do what all players do, we're running it off. If you can, you run it off. Pick up though by Northern Ireland. Here we go, 31-30 they lead. Tona looking for support. Contact, wing defence. Zimbabwe have really done a good job in slowing down the transition from Northern Ireland, not able to take the ball sweetly through as they did in the first quarter. Armstrong just unable to slot that one home. Sitting on 79%. 31-30 still, Zimbabwe on the tack through the centre third of court number two here in Liverpool. Nice take there from, from the wing attack, but it falls back into the hands of Northern Ireland, looking to capitalise. O'Hanlon. Space and penetrate through the Zimbabwe defence. Nice take. Noli and Armstrong. That's better. First time in for the Northern Ireland start. And that all looked from the work of Gemma Lawler the other end. She's only five foot ten against the Kaiser, six foot three, and has proved with some really good footwork to win some balls for Northern Ireland. That goal was down to her. Build up again in front of the Northern Ireland bench. 
more time. It's persistent infringing. Need to stop contacting and obstructing. Out there. No caution given, just a, a word to Kuramba to tidy it up. Good umpiring that, just having the conversation before the caution's given. And here we see the Northern Ireland defence just not allowing Zimbabwe to come through the middle. And then a, a wayward pass to the sideline. That's what Northern Ireland are doing so well. The interceptions will come, the loose balls will come. Snatch, stays in the hands of Northern Ireland. That's oh, much better for McGee, the movement, but unable to place that into Armstrong. Oh, shooting percentages, Camilla, have dropped now for Northern Ireland. Understandably raving about the 100% that both of the shooters had, dropping down to 78 and 86%, but they're still pulling away with this one, Northern Ireland, turning the screw just a little bit against Zimbabwe, so they need to fight like they did before to keep in it, not let it extend out too much. But again, fans. the goal attack, putting it into the hands of the shooter that's on fight. Now, I understand when you feed a shooter who is in good form, and at least now she's slightly sharing the load, and we have two shooters for Zimbabwe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what I would want to see is just a bit more structure through the Zimbabwe attack at the moment. They're relying on their athleticism. Oh, unlucky there from Kuramba. They're, they're, they're relying on their athleticism to get free. There's not much structure. You've got players going into the same space. You've got nobody punching through the middle of the court and thinking about overloading the Northern Ireland defence to open up the space. And there we see Lawler again with the contact. However, they're the kind of balls that they're trying to create. They're stopping them coming through the middle so that they have to go long. They have to go to the pocket. And then Lawler's at the back, just a sitting duck waiting to take those interceptions. Contact. Hard time. Wing defence, it's now a caution. You're contacting her all the time. Yeah, the wing defence for Zimbabwe, picking up a caution. Clarice Karamba. You can't argue with that. Only 60 seconds ago, she was talked to by the same Contact. umpire. You've got to change what you do. You have to adjust to the umpires, regardless of whether or not you agree with it so in a flash we've only got seven and a half minutes remaining of this third quarter northern ireland center pass a handling over to drain center obstruction getting some good work and good feeding northern ireland in that particular part of the court with caroline o'hanlon at the moment it's working well for the northern ireland side in terms of a passage of play it is and what they lost there in that in that uh, second quarter, sorry, was just the movement of Armstrong and McGee. They relied on the centre court and then being able to keep the pace of the ball, which is something that Dan Ryan talks about. He talks about the fact that the That's ball can do the work. You've got to get the yeah. ball moving, but it also needs the intensity of the goal attack to create those balls for the goal shooter in Armstrong. So you've seen that in the last few minutes, them step up that intensity, which has enabled them to go four goals ahead. So both teams, as all the nations, battle hard. Once every four years, the Netball World Cup. Northern Ireland qualifying after finishing second at the Europe Regional Qualifying Tournament in January last year. Zimbabwe second at the African Regional Qualifier Tournament in August last year. They won all their matches except one against Uganda. The 40th nation to compete in the Netball World Cup since it started back in 1963. Big, heavy African presence, of course, for African nations here. More teams than any other INF region being represented here in Liverpool. At the moment, all Zimbabwe care about is pulling back a four-goal deficit after going into half-time level at 24 goals apiece. Contact centre penalty. And that was much better through court from Zimbabwe. They were a lot more patient. They thought about the spaces that they were punching through on to get in a more desirable position to feed. Thirty from 31. But Akeza in that goal shooting position for Zimbabwe. We go again. 
Well, it's it's gonna, if you're going to buy some fizzy pop for anybody after this game, the Zimbabwe fans, you've got to put it in the direction of their goal shooter today. She's doing an absolutely sterling job, Carolina Hanlon, though. A little bit of frustration there, a little bit of a turnover. Five minutes remaining of this third quarter. This possession is crucial for Zimbabwe. Oh, unable to keep control of it. Need a little bit of patience, need a little bit of calm and control. They're getting back into this one, just two goals down. As you say, Camilla missed an opportunity there to pull another one back and go just one behind. And then their centre pass. Great composure there from Michelle Drain. Getting a real hammering from Clarice Poramba in the ring defense. So 37 34. See the Zimbabwe bench movement again. A change being made into the goal attack position. Is the original goal attack coming back on? She is. She Your is eyes indeed. Don't you. Is she going to. Oh, and with a contact straight away. So. Is she going to inject her magic that we that saw in that contact, first. Contact. First game of the World Cup? Oh, she's Potentially she's yeah. had a talking to. Oh my gosh. And now she's wandering off the goal, dear. She's took a little knock in the side again. The goal attack. And Lovu putting a body on the line. As you mentioned, Camilla, 14 from 15 in that win against Sri Lanka Contact on Friday. Penalty. The goal attack now back on court. A little roll to the ball for her from her teammate. There we go. Nice. She looks as though she means a little bit more business. Conversations continue on the Zimbabwe bench. A massive exhale from the head coach. He's gesticulating, he's talking about gaps. Look, some of them are not happy. Lloyd McCundy, who started coaching in basketball and then a couple of decades ago got into netball because his friend who was coaching the netball team changed jobs and said, Oi, come on Lloyd, you can get involved in this. And he's been stuck in our beautiful game ever since, leading Zimbabwe to their first ever World Cup, let's not forget. Making history, exciting Zimbabwe netball fans being here in Liverpool. And he said he's excited to be making history. So he should be. It's brilliant that they're here. The gear goes down, pulled back up by Caroline O'Hanlon. There's obstruction against the centre, but step back. Under the post. That's there we go. go. More changes for Zimbabwe. Wing In the wing defence position. Karamba was on. And she's now gone off. That's all the action at the moment coming from that Zimbabwe bench. Two minutes coming up until the final quarter. Northern Ireland have the two-goal advantage. It was deadlock at half-time, 24 goals apiece. The Barbie looking to pull back exactly like they did in the last few minutes before half-time. Oh, fantastic take there from the Malawi on the circle edge. Great, great anticipating of that intercept there. Oh. Able to stay outside. Look at that. Absolute magic. was important. That brings Zimbabwe back to one with 90 seconds remaining. Oh, surely not again, Camilla. We're coming into the dying seconds of a quarter. This to draw level, 38 goals apiece. You are kidding me. This is amazing. Fantastic work, and I knew that if Lovu got into this game that we'd have a game on and the Karamba with the interception. Five for two, she comes out for the fly to win ball for her team. She's been outstanding this tournament so far. To take the lead, to give them a one goal advantage with a minute to go. Oh, I don't think they can cope. Camilla, the Zimbabwe fans are going to take the roof off the MS Bank Arena here. 
It's their centre pass. This will be to go two up with 45 seconds remaining, but a throw away. It's going to be a pick up for Northern Ireland. Tona looking for it. The Zimbabwe bench aren't going to give it up. Find it yourself. And they're off. O'Hanlon looking for space. Zimbabwe need somebody in their centre court position to get control of this game. You've got to Kaiser at the end, who you can see is a really strong, strong head, but you need somebody in that attacking end in the mid-court, sorry, just to get control of it, control the pace of it coming through court. Here we go. This to draw it level. There's 10 seconds on the clock. Players have to be time aware. The big clock above them. Four major screens at the moment here at the MS Bank Arena. This to draw level at 39 apiece. No pressure. Oh, it rolls out. But a second attempt on the buzzer. Wow. What a third quarter. 39 goals apiece with 15 minutes to go. If you're only just joining us, welcome to the Netball World Cup. is going to require some cool heads, some smart play and some Back serious guts center. to see who's going to come out triumphant in this game. There's blood in the fourth quarter to Northern Ireland. A reminder, Camilla, then, of the connotations of this match. This is the final match for Northern Ireland and Zimbabwe in Group A. They've qualified. Both of these teams will go forward to Group center. F. The winners will play New Zealand tomorrow, the losers will play Malawi tomorrow, but the bigger picture overall, it must be about momentum, right? It must be about just getting on a little bit of a roll in the second stage of the World Cup. Absolutely, so yeah, they will, they'll play, the winners will play New, uh, New Zealand, the losers will play Malawi, but they will all play each other. So what, will, what that means is the points, however, are taken forward to the next stage, so every win counts. And at the end of the day, this is huge for both of these teams. The performance that, they're, that is required from them to elevate to this win is only going to bode well for later on in the competition. So both teams are going to want to get this win out there, even though they're both through. Absolutely crucial. Well, Dan Ryan, the head coach of Northern Ireland. That construction, you've already been cautioned. That's now a warning. If you continue with the obstruction, you'll be suspended. Yep, I pause my point because the centre for Zimbabwe. Patricia Malaudi being the told, basically, this is your last chance. I'm going to suspend you if you continue to do what you are doing. What I was saying was Dan Ryan, the head coach of Northern Ireland, Camilla came in to this World Cup saying, I am targeting a top six finish. That is Dan Ryan's goal. From what you've seen so far, is that realistic? Well, that's, it is realistic, and that's the sign of a good coach is that they come in with a really realistic targets and he you know he said against Australia that that wasn't a game that that they were looking at it was these two games that they wanted to really take a hold of and at the moment those questions are being asked of his team fantastic take there from Kwanga who's been outstanding her relationship look at that interception there into the space her and Karuma have been really really key tonight their relationship and partnership to win ball for Zimbabwe. Not a tall circle. Contact wing defence. Yeah, contact called against the wing defence for Zimbabwe. She stands by the side. There is Paramba. Gives Northern Ireland the chance to creep back ahead by one. 42-41. Emma McGee just quietly getting on with things, sitting on 15 from 17 attempts, 82%. A rare shot from the goal attack for Zimbabwe. Lorraine doesn't disappoint. Advantage not on side, 
Lawler attempted the hoist there just to lift her player into a higher position, but not phase Lovu, sinks it over the top. Well, we started this fourth quarter here, goal for goal. That's what we were hoping. That's what the neutral fans want. In fact, you know what? It's what the Northern Ireland fans, the Zimbabwe fans want as well. World Cup netball, goal for goal here with 11 and a half minutes remaining of this match. Which way is it going to go? Northern Ireland have a victory against Sri Lanka. Zimbabwe have a victory against Sri Lanka. But there can only be one winner of Northern Ireland and Zimbabwe before we head towards stage two. Caroline O'Hanlon, ever moving, never stops in that centre position, everywhere but the Dean. She's an absolute engine and she's ridiculously hard to play against. She's always re-offering, always an option, but then on your tail when she's working you in defence. But her connection with Michelle Drain tonight has been pretty tight. into the hands of Armstrong. Nice little bounce pass in. Nice. A big breath out before the shot was taken for Armstrong. That's a miss that she doesn't want when her team are only two up. Now, once again, Zimbabwe go to capitalise. In the back third. Good space found. Good movement, good flow of the ball. Oh, this is a lovely move. It finishes with the goal. The way Brilliant she stuff. takes that ball, I mean, it wasn't into the right space, but she almost breaks her back to get it unfazed. Look at her face. She's not at all affected by this pressure that she's got on her shoulders at the moment. Great ball in. McGee unable to contest that ball in the air there. And with 44 apiece. Under 10 minutes remaining. She pops another one in. wing defence, she takes it, she stands by, Karamba, watches on. Oh, great work there from Kwanga again with the goods for Zimbabwe, she's been outstanding. Crucial interceptions at crucial times now, this is where the calm head is needed. They've won these balls before and then the ball's gone astray, who's going to take control and say yes, give it to me, I will put it through the net. Contact yeah. call given, so she gets another bite of the cherry. Yeah, heavy contact as well, to be fair. She's going to get another chance. And she nails it this time to give Zimbabwe a one-goal lead. It's an interception. And that was better. A little bit of calm, a little bit of control. Ends with a Zimbabwe goal. Almost pushes her own player out of the way there to get that. We said who's going to take control, and at the moment, Kwanga saying me, I am. And so is this lady here. Slight hesitation, which we haven't seen, but she puts it through the net. The continuing discussions and animations. You see the Zimbabwe bench now. They're kind of, come on, let's go. Let's keep moving it down the court. You see them in the back of your shot. Zimbabwe with the loose ball. They've got to keep the movement. Caroline O'Hanlon to let him to settle down, not to panic. Zimbabwe need to keep the movement. Oh, and McGee with the touch, but unable to gain possession for her team. You can understand the excitement, though, Camilla, from Zimbabwe. It's a World Cup debut. They're world ranked number 13, five places behind Northern Ireland. They've had a win against Sri Lanka. They've had that winning taste at the Netball World Cup, and they want it again with a second win. They've got nothing to lose here, Zimbabwe, and they're playing like that, so it's important. That's how much the Zimbabwe bench want it, but so does Dan Ryan. He's now getting animated, you can see in the back of his shot. Dan Ryan's moving forward. He's starting to be a bit more vocal now, the Northern Ireland coach, because he wants his second win here before they go into group F. Oh, contact call. That was nice defensive play there. Dan Ryan looking concerned. Slight push, questionable. Air ball, but McGee's there to tidy up the mess. Back to one goal. 
Good Zimbabwe centre pass. So Zimbabwe looking to move it through. Oh, it's a wayward pass from Lovu. Just a missed oh. communication, but she doesn't need to panic because possession is still with Zimbabwe. Paulo oh, couldn't control that one. Oh, hello. We have a lot of planks on this court over here, Catherine Merry. <laughs> we like planking on the ball, but the ball was already out of play, so she got away with that offside. Contact 45 47. Centre Six and a half minutes remaining. Northern Ireland looking to pull one back. The bar went out with a two goal lead. So the chanting started again. It's been so close, Camilla Buchanan. Let's clarify the rules in terms of this qualifying stage. If it does end up in a draw, let's have a look at the rules and regulations. It can be a draw, it will go on goal difference. Both teams will get one point for the draw, but neither of these teams are going to want to go away with that today. Apologies, goal percentage. It goes off of goal percentage if it's a draw, not goal difference. My mistake. So, we'll keep you over everything statistically. Get your brains working, your cogs turning. And all the different connotations that can happen. Australia had a huge win behind us on court one. That game has been done and dusted, but this one is coming into the final five minutes. And it's Zimbabwe that have crept to a two goal advantage. Goalkeeper stands by. And another one's pulled back. Caution given there for Karume, but I've been so impressed with her partnership with Karume and Kwangwa. The work that they do in there to work the front, to work the back, to create the interceptions. So effective. Just needs the calm head from. Fantastic one handed take. You just can't fault this lady, can you? It's amazing, and it is appreciated by the Zimbabwe Gems. They fought so hard to get here on the court with the talent, yes, to qualify, but also as a team. It's been a hard task for the Zimbabwe side to get the support that they need to be here in Liverpool. They are fighting for every single goal. And now the Northern Ireland team pull it to just one back. Well, you talk about how they get here and the lady in question that we're talking about, Takaiza, had to set up a GoFundMe page just to be able to get here in this championship. And that is crazy when you see the quality that she's added to this championship. Oh, unlucky obstruction call there. Unlucky from... Who's been outstanding to in this contest? Oh, she misses underneath. McGee doesn't. She slots that one away to get Northern Ireland back on level peggings. Somebody's going to hit half a century here and hit the 50 mark first. Three minutes to go. Northern Ireland, Zimbabwe. I know you've enjoyed this match as much as we have. Which way is it going to go? Drain on the circle. Oh, the oh. offensive contact given. That is a crucial call for Northern Ireland. They'll be sick to the stomach with that one. Oh, oh, some of the crowd didn't like it. Centre, that's contact, that's causing. Caroline O'Hannon, you can sense that she's willing her team in for this win here. Lovu going for the shuffle shot. Oh, and there's that pass the other end. We've not seen that yet. We've not seen that missed pass into Takaiza. And Lovu with the intercept. A 
obstruction called. So it's back in the hands of Northern Ireland. Lola, the goalkeeper for Northern Ireland, glancing up at the clock, shouting to her teammates. This to take the lead, this to take it 50 to 49. Two minutes coming up on the clock. Oh, it's a wayward pass, but it's going to land back in the hands of Drain. The wing attack for Northern Ireland. Saracen Mavericks player here in the UK Super League with the ball. O'Hanlon takes with the Velcro hand. Back outside the shooting D. This will be to take the lead. And the stay there, she is again in the hands of Zimbabwe. Kwangwa absolutely outstanding for her team. You want to talk about a match winner. This could potentially be it. She wins the ball for her team on Northern Ireland. Sends a pass and what a scrap it is. Out there, you can see how much it means to both of these teams. And Lovu, is she calm? Is she calm? Absolutely, yes, she is. Zimbabwe go one ahead and it's their centre pass. With just over a minute on the clock. Right, Northern Ireland need a mistake. Northern Ireland need an error to get the ball back in their possession. It goes into the hands of the shooting star. That's two. That's the lead for Zimbabwe with 53 seconds to go. The fans have gone absolutely mad. Contact called. It's not over yet. Two goals can be scored in under a minute. It's been done before. But with a touch like that on the ball, time is called. They've got to wait for it to be restarted. Gosh. Incorrect setting. Kate Stevenson making sure it's set in the right place. Dan Ryan looks on, the head coach of Northern Ireland. 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, oh and it's a miss from oh. Armstrong. That's got to be really. That's got to be the end of it. Going for the possession game, but they've got to keep it moving. 15 seconds on the clock. Zimbabwe control. It's going to be another win for the Zimbabwe Gems. Carolina O'Hanlon, the captain of Northern Ireland, knocks up at the clock. Two, one, Zimbabwe win over Northern Ireland. What a match to end the action on court two of day three of the Vitality Netball World Cup. 49 for Northern Ireland. 51 for Zimbabwe, the coaching staff are off the bench. A truly superb display of netball, of competitive world-class netball. It's not the best ranked teams in the world, Camilla Buchanan, but that was an amazing, amazing game. Look at these scenes, this is a championship winning team. You can see how much it means to this team, they're dropping to their knees. You could see the disappointment into Kaiser on missing that last shot, but it doesn't matter because Zimbabwe have got their second win of the championship. And what a display they put on, not only for their home fans here, but for the rest of us. Welcome to World Netball Zimbabwe. It means everything. Northern Ireland fought, but Zimbabwe never let them go. Northern Ireland 51, Zimbabwe 51, Northern Ireland 49, what a match on court two, superb stuff. Two goal victory then for Zimbabwe, the huddle of Northern Ireland on the left. Qualified of course, let's not forget, both of these teams will go forward into Group F, into the second stage preliminary action. But we need to take a look back in just a few moments at what was a superb Netball World Cup match from both sides. It was eagerly anticipated and it didn't fail to deliver. Let's take a look back then at what was a fascinating first half of action.
some of the highlights from the Zimbabwe Gems on their World Cup debut here in Liverpool, England. It was the shooting show from the goal shooter, Joyce Takeza. 15-12, Northern Ireland led after the first 15 minutes. Zimbabwe just never let the Northern Irish side go. Snapping at the heels of a team ranked five places above them in the INF World Rankings. Some good shooting from Armstrong. But there just was no let up in the pace and the action, in the drive and desire. You really didn't know which way it was going to go. 27 all at half time, 39 all after the end of the third quarter. And it took until the final few seconds to work out who was going to win this final group A match between Northern Ireland and Zimbabwe. And you can't fault either team. You can't fault Northern Ireland for the sterling effort they put in. You could see how much it meant to them. They had the structures, but there was probably just a little bit more heart from Zimbabwe. The combination of Kurume and Kwangwa proved absolutely lethal. That lady just there that's hit the deck. What an outstanding performance from that young lady today. An absolute match winner. So wonderful to watch back the highlights of a truly superb game. The Zimbabwe Gems are still celebrating as they should. A huge win for them. Four points now. Australia won earlier. Zimbabwe have won just against Northern Ireland, but they are the top three teams in Group A that will go forward into Group F. There you go, the points have been added on. Sri Lanka will go into Group E, and the player of the match for Zimbabwe is now in the mix zone. I hope she is, she may be celebrating somewhere. <laughs> Thanks very much. We dragged her away from her celebrations. Felicitas Kwangwa, what a performance. We saw tears at the end. We saw players on your knees. Can you sum up the emotion of what that means? Oh, we really needed to win this game. It was really tough for us. Uh, Northern Ireland made our life very difficult today. And as you saw, we were about to lose. So we couldn't lose. We want to make our nation pride. So we needed this game so much because we had promised our nation that we were going to make it. Your first World Cup, you'd already progressed through to the next stage anyway. This is just living a dream, isn't it? Yes, it is. I really needed this moment and I'm so happy about it. <sighs> and how far can you go from here? Because you don't seem to fear any opposition at all. I think we'll end in the top eight. <laughs> That's what we are fighting for. Thank you very much. Well played today. I'm going to bring in your coach. Wow, what an incredible game. How proud are you of your side right now? Um, I, I can't, I, I, I really can't express myself. I'm very, I'm overwhelmed. Very happy about this. And what do you think that victory was built on how proud must your side be they just wouldn't give up would they yeah it was it was built on teamwork teamwork really prevailed prevailed today i owe it to the girls they were wonderful on, on court and this is your first world cup wow wow because you're through to the knockout stages and you're ready to take on anyone aren't you yes anyone anyone we we, we, we would take anyone I think we'll go as far as we can. Very, very well played today. What a joy to watch. What a fantastic game. Thank you very much. So I think the words of Lloyd Makundi sum it up. And look at this, the reaction of the Zimbabwe Gems. Myself and Camilla Buchanan alluded to it in commentary. We've been doing so all the way through their World Cup debut of the hard work that it's taken off the court as well as on it to get them here to make their World Cup debut. That is what it means. So let's look at some of the match stats then, Camilla Buchanan, for the final time in an absolutely enthralling Netball World Cup match. Yeah, and the shooting stats is what it comes down to. You've got Northern Ireland sitting on 79% from their 62 shots. So they had nine more shots, but you know, I don't know, we can talk numbers, we can talk stats, but for tonight, I think that was one on heart and Zimbabwe definitely had the bigger heart tonight. They were fantastic. You could see what it meant to them at the end there and fantastic from Zimbabwe.
Well, it was, but let's hear the thoughts of the head coach of Northern Ireland, Dan Ryans with Gail Davis. Thanks very much, Catherine. Well, Dan, that was an absolute emotional roller coaster and utterly exhausting to watch. What on earth was it like to coach? Oh, gutting way to finish the game, obviously, but I think um, in terms of the spectacle and the quality of netball at times, I thought it was a brilliant game to be a part of. So that's what the World Cup's all about. Um, I thought both teams played really well at certain times, but uh, what a lesson to learn in trust. So, um, yeah, really disappointing way to finish. Why do you think your side just weren't able to get over the line? Well, I think they stopped trusting each other. We, we got up by five goals by executing the game plan beautifully. And, you know, it was working for most parts of the match. And then at times when you choose not to give a ball to someone or, you know, you overcommit to something, whatever it might be, or you lose faith in your teammate and that trust piece is so important. And I think, you know, in crucial moments in today's game, we didn't trust each other. And I think that's the difference between us winning and us losing. And you look at Zimbabwe and they had trust between every single player on that court. And... They backed themselves and they won and full credit to them, they were amazing. It's obviously not over for you though, is it? You've gone through to the next round. It obviously makes it very difficult to reach the targets you set yourself, but got to pick yourself up. Looks like Malawi, doesn't it, tomorrow? Yeah, it does, and I think an early start as well. So, you know, this whole World Cup is about learning the lessons and learning them very quickly and picking yourself up and going again. And obviously tomorrow is going to be a, a really tough ask as well. Certainly our campaign isn't over, but it's damn harder than what we wanted it to be. Um, but we've got no choice but to learn from this and, and represent again tomorrow. So um, tough pill to swallow, but such is high-performance sport. And just finally, we see you very calm most of the time. You you're a lot of fun, the girls have said that. But in times like this, do you get cross, do you get angry, do you shout and scream? Oh, I'm incredibly disappointed. I think we should have won that game. It's, it's that simple. And I think we had opportunities to win the game. And again, it was down to trust. And I've spent a lot of time with this group, getting them to try to really think intricately about how they trust each other, how they communicate to each other. And when they don't communicate and they don't trust, that's what happens. So um, I hope it's a lesson that they do take away um, because it is something that I've been on them from the very beginning. And I've seen improvements, but we've just really needed to put that trust piece into place when it really, really mattered. And it was great for most parts of the game, but just not at the crunch. So um, we'll go again and, and hopefully tomorrow will be better. It's a new day. Thanks very much, Dan. It, it won't mean much for you right now, but what a thrilling game to, to watch on. Game of the World Cup so far. Thanks very much.